it's a never ending energy. Like, whoa, I know you don't want no enemies. I know they hate you, look that beautiful right next to me. So, Loki is one of the most interesting characters in Record of Ragnarok. He has not yet fought, but he's on the roster. His battle is coming soon. And I believe that his character is one of the most crucial pieces of evidence for post Ragnarok continuation. So what does that mean? I think that after the tournament, the series will not end. And I think we are actually going to get a war. I've talked about this in my Evil Odin theory a little bit. If you have not seen that video, check that one out. Where I discussed the two potential factions for the post Ragnarok war. One being led by Odin and the other being led by Buddha. A lot of this speculation comes from the meeting between Loki and Buddha where Loki calls Buddha a traitor. Now we ended up finding out that Buddha is a traitor to the gods as he ended up fighting for humanity when he was on the gods roster. But this accusation was because of something entirely separate from Buddha's fight. Loki confronted Buddha and said, in the world of Buddhism, if two people forfeit each other's lives and put them on the same lotus, it brings out the full potential of one's being. This power, they call it common destiny. This common destiny is what Valuns are. A technique that made it possible for humans to counter even the gods by betting on the life of a Valkyrie. We did get confirmation that Buddha is the one who instructed Brunhilde on Valund. What's the significance of all this? Well, for one, Loki straight up told Buddha if he was a traitor, he was personally going to be the one to kill him. And some people may take that as an idle threat. But here you can see when they flex their auras, they are about the same level. Now, that just may be a visual effect. It may not have anything to do with their power level. But I, for one, think Loki is actually going to be pretty strong. I don't know if he's as strong as Buddha, but we will surely see. And I do believe post Ragnarok, we will see a Loki versus Buddha fight. Furthermore, when the seven lucky gods showed up and interrupted this confrontation, Loki was adamant on fighting Buddha alone. He is confident he can fight him. Now, again, take that with a grain of salt. Does that mean he's on equal footing? We don't know. But what we do know is Loki wants Buddha's blood. But how is he going to get to that point? Well, I, for one, think he is going to win his fight in Ragnarok because obviously I think he's going to be crucial post Ragnarok. So the question for me now becomes, who is Loki going to fight? Well, he also set up a fight with a human that is yet to fight. That human, of course, being Okita Suji. From the minute Okita saw Loki, he did not like him. He labeled him as one of those bad gods. And he would take great pleasure in cutting him down. And he planned on doing so if it wasn't for Zeus and Odin's interruption of this scuffle. Of course, I do think it will be a close fight as pretty much every Ragnarok fight has been a close fight. Maybe with the exception of Thor versus Lu Bu, which I would say Thor had the easiest victory that anybody in the tournament has had thus far. Obviously, besides Buddha versus Zero Fuko. But I do believe Loki will prevail. We've even gotten a tease at hinting at Loki's abilities and his weapon of choice. As you can see here, he has these chain link scythes that come out of the palms of his hands. And this is giving me Blades of Chaos vibes. Like he's going to be swinging these all around calling them back, etc. And they look really cool, especially this shot right here where you can see the full extent of the weapon's reach. He's also the trickster god. And if you guys just recently played God of War Ragnarok, you know Atreus, who is Loki, has the ability to shapeshift into animals. I don't know if this Loki will have those same abilities because a lot of times they take liberties in kind of nerfing the gods in a way we don't get to see poseidon fight with water we don't get to see hades fight with an undead army we didn't even get to see zeus fight with his lightning bolt which that one may be something slightly different it's possible that zeus just wanted to go barehanded based on his arrogant nature he still may have a lightning bolt and i do believe he probably does have a lightning bolt meaning he's probably actually stronger than what we've seen but without a doubt, these gods do not have all of their mythological abilities. So it's going to be very interesting to see how they handle Loki. Also take note that guys like Sasaki are raring to fight again. I don't think they're just going to give all these characters one fight and call it a day. I'll reiterate that right now. There is going to be something big that happens after Ragnarok. We may not even finish the Ragnarok tournament. Something could interrupt it. I forget Buddha's infamous words about introducing the dragon slaying hero who will shake up Ragnarok, Siegfried, who just so happens to be 
tied to Brunhilde, things are surely about to get very, very interesting. But what do you guys think? Let me know all your ideas and theories down below. If you like the video, make sure you subscribe, drop a like, and turn on those notifications to stay up to date with all the Record of Ragnarok information. I cover each new chapter every single month, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Like what she got me trimming like